Good morning, church. It is good to be here on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Announcements remain pretty much the same. Bible study on Sunday mornings at 930. If you would like a link to that, you can send it uh, me an email or a text, and I will get that to you, and you can join us. Um, there's a group of us doing a race anti-racism study on Thursday nights. Um, if you are interested in that, let us know, because we're hoping to hold more of these as we move forward. Our church is busy. Um, I know it doesn't look that way when you drive by, but we are taking food to the food pantry every single Wednesday. You have been very generous, and we thank you for that. Um, we are still collecting underwear for the Undy 500 for the guest house in Milwaukee, and that is until next Monday, and I'll take everything down after we receive the last of that. We continue to pray for one another, to reach out to one another. We continue to be the church. The question of when we open our sanctuary. The word sanctuary means safe place. And we will open it when we are sure it is a safe place for everyone. There's a lot of unknowns during these days, and this is frustrating. Trust me, I don't like preaching to an empty church any more than you like being, not being at church. But it's where we are. Yes, some churches have opened up, and many who have opened up have seen an increase in cases of COVID-19. We don't want to be that stati statistic. So please be patient with us. We are talking about it, we are trying to figure this out, but we are not at that place right now. We gather here in the name of our God, who is our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Let us prepare our hearts, our minds, and our souls for worship as we listen to the prelude, Amazing Grace. join me in the call to worship. God calls into our midst those who are beloved in all their diversity. We welcome them. God calls into our midst all those who are vulnerable, in need of teaching, healing, shelter. We welcome them. God calls into our midst those, all those with a word of challenge that proclaims God's kingdom for all. We welcome them. Let us worship God who calls us to be prophets of welcome. Alleluia. Please pray with me. Holy One who calls us into community and invites us to welcome your prophets and messengers, let us experience your welcome to us, gathered in various places but joined in this moment. Show us that we are beloved and honored in your presence and in this community. Show us how to put our resources at the service of all, Help us to know that the cup of water given in your name nourishes the one who gives and the one who receives. Satisfy our thirst to know your presence here and now. 
Amen. Our opening hymn is Let Us Build a House Where Love Can Dwell. Let us join in singing together. from Genesis chapter 22 verses 1 through 14 is not an easy story. I almost omitted it, but I think sometimes we have to face the difficult texts in the Bible and try to make some sense out of them. And this is one I think that troubles many of us. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abram took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abram said, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. 
Matthew's gospel is very short um, this week. We're ending this discourse and sending the disciples out. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. These are the stories of our faith, and now we must find meaning for them in the living of our days. Would you please pray with me? Dear and holy God, as we gather to hear your word, in spite of all the words that we have swirling around our hearts and in our heads, open our minds, open our souls, open our ears to hear your word, your true word to us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well then, if these aren't some, if this isn't a difficult text, speaking of the Genesis text, and then you pair it with the Matthew text and you say, what do these things have in common? How do these two texts even go together? Let's start with the Genesis text and see if we can make some sense out of it. It is by far one of the most difficult texts in the Bible. We read this text and we're like, what kind of a God? Wait, first of all, gives Abraham and Sarah a child very late in life, according to the text, and then turns around and says, hey, let's go sacrifice him. Your one and only child, the one that you waited years and decades for, let's go sacrifice him. Because if you really love me, you'll give up your son. Wow. Now, a few things I read this week tried to make that comparison between Abraham and his son and God and Jesus. I think that's a stretch. I, I'm not comfortable with that myself. Now, a lot of people are, but I, I don't think that's what this is about. I think we get so caught up in this text about God telling Abraham to sacrifice his son and Abraham actually willing to do it that we miss some other things that are going on here. This text is about Abraham's faith. How faithful is he to God? So you look at this, and it says God tested Abraham. I, we take it at its worth, I guess. You know, it seems odd to me. I'm not comfortable with it. But there's a couple of things that Abraham says and does that I think we need to listen to. First of all, every time Abraham is called out, either by God or his son or the angel that God sent, his response is, here I am. Here I am. Abraham is present to the word of God. How many of us can say that as much as Abraham has said it? Here I am. I am listening. And clearly Abraham is listening far more than we are. Because there's another clue in this text that says Abraham knows what God's will is in this. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship. And then we will come back. We will come back. Abraham did not say, I will come back. He said, we will come back. He had no uh, he had no intention of sacrificing Abraham, uh, Isaac because he knew, he knew that God would provide. We will come back. And then when Isaac questions Abraham, and it's very, very important, I think, that Isaac has a voice in this text. Often children don't have a voice in the scripture, but in this text, Isaac has a voice. Uh, Father, and Abraham says, here am I. Now, in the context to his son, is saying to his son, I'm here with you. That should be comfort for you. No matter what happens, I am here with you. Okay, we've got the wood. We've got the fire. Aren't we missing something? We, like, what are we going to sacrifice? We don't have a lamb or a goat or a ram. Uh, Dad? And Abram said, God himself will provide. 
God himself will provide. And the story ends that God provided. But there's one more thing going on here that I find kind of curious. Abraham has his hand up with the knife, ready to sacrifice his son. When the angel cries out, Abraham, Abraham, what do you say? Say it with me. Here I am. Here I am. Don't do it. And it never says, look over there. But Abraham looks up and sees the ram caught in a thicket. How long was that ram there? Did it really just show up at this moment? Or had that ram been there all along, but Abraham didn't see it? because he was so focused on what he was doing. Now, you might say in this context, well, good, he was focused because he was listening to God. He was present with God during this time. But how many people in our lives get sacrificed because we're so caught up in what we're doing, we don't look up and see what God is providing? Think about that for a moment. How many people get sacrificed in our lives because we are so focused on what we're doing that we don't see what God is providing in front of us. Matthew's gospel is all about extravagant welcome. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. Whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. It seems kind of a lot of words to say welcome. But remember who the disciples are and who's being welcomed in this time. The disciples are the ones being sent out to spread the word of God. They aren't staying still and waiting for people to come to them. They are being sent out. This whole portion of Matthew, this whole discourse, is about sending the disciples out to those who need to hear the word of God. And Jesus is very clear during this whole portion of, of text that they're going to go places and people are going to reject them. And they're going to go places where people are going to offer them extravagant hospitality. Expect both. So when we look at this text, we kind of have to put ourselves in two places. And the one is, are we welcoming those who have the word of God and want to offer it to us? Or, when we hear that word, is it too difficult, too challenging, and to reject the one bringing the message? How hospitable are we really to the word of God, the word of justice, the word of righteousness, the word of hope, the word that gets uncomfortable and calls us into accountability when we are not the faithful ones? Are we open to that word? Are we welcoming to that word? The flip side of this is, are we being disciples? Are we going out and proclaiming that word? Are we holding back because, you know, some people won't like us then and we like being liked? Are we unabashedly proclaiming the word that Jesus brought to us, the word of hope and justice? the word that speaks against oppression of any kind in our world, the word that the empire doesn't want to hear because Jesus spoke against the empire and spoke, spoke excuse me, to these little ones. These little ones in this context, in the Greek, we're not talking about children. These little ones are the least of these, the poor, the oppressed, the outcast the ones who really need to hear the word of hope that the gospel brings. But too often, we are not willing to preach it because it's uncomfortable for us. It takes us out of our comfort zones. Are we willing to be faithful to the point of not being welcome? So how do these two go together? I don't know. Maybe they don't, right? <laughs> it's difficult. But Abraham is consistently present to God's word and God's calling. 
consistently and persistently. How consistent and persistent are we to the word of God's calling? Has God been calling our name and we've ignored it? Sorry, not in today, God. Are we responding, here I am? Are we running in the opposite direction because we'd rather be comfortable with the way our lives are and not overturn the apple cart, so to speak? Both these texts are troubling, but not for the reasons we think. We get uncomfortable with Genesis because we think God's making Abraham sacrifice his son. That's ludicrous. What kind of, who wants to worship that kind of God? But all along, God had provided. And Abraham knew that and trusted that. Maybe the problem is we don't hear it and we don't trust it because we are not consistently and persistently putting ourselves in the presence of God's holy word. We want to be welcomed by everybody. If you're truly preaching and speaking the word of God, there are going to be those who are going to be uncomfortable, and there are those who are going to revile you and hate you. Jesus knew that. He prepared the disciples to know that. In 21st century America and around the world, we need to be retaught that so that we can preach the word that God calls us to preach. Preach the word that ends racism, that ends sexism, that ends genderism, that ends all the isms in the world so that we can truly be a united be be people, a united people who work for justice and the end of oppression in all our world. I don't know what you're doing, but look up. God is providing. But you have to enter into the relationship with God to see it. Open your eyes. Let us open our hearts and our minds. Let's open all of ourselves to allow the beauty of God's love to allow the significance, even in the difficulty of God's word, to enter into our lives in a way that is transforming for us and all we meet. Amen. Let us join together in singing When the Poor Ones, also originally written as Quandro, Quandro el Pobre.
As we come to share our joys and our concerns, um, I haven't heard a lot of new ones. We continue to pray for the families of Barbara O'Connor, that's Pastor Catherine's mother, Kevin Karstead and Marianne Birschbach, who have passed from this life to eternal life. We pray for those struggling with health issues, Carrie and Dale, Olivia and Dale, Jessica and Pastor Catherine herself. We continue to pray for a cure for this disease. Um, we're all tired of this, but the disease doesn't seem to be quite tired of us yet, so we need to be diligent during these times and be faithful to our distancing and our staying at home. Um, we're seeing spikes, and that is not good. We will not gather for worship until we see that curve flatten. We pray for Doris May and Ken and Carol. Um, they are really shut down in their nursing homes, and we pray for them. We pray for the Philippines, Egypt, and India, and all the world that is suffering during this time. We pray for our church, that we will continue to be open, open to doing mission, open to doing ministry in the name of God. But sometimes we aren't open, sometimes we aren't listening. And so we have to pray to our God for forgiveness. So let's join together in the prayer of confession. Holy God, Jesus taught what it means to welcome and showed a beautiful and beloved community where there is room for all. For times when we have created our own closed communities, forgive us. For times when we have excluded others because of who they are or what they believe, forgive us. For times when we think that our way is better, a better way than other ways, forgive us. For the times we don't want to find things in common with or love others who are different from us, forgive us. For the times we have become so comfortable in our lives that we don't want to be uncomfortable by welcoming people who are beyond our doors, forgive us. May we extend the welcome we receive through your spirit, and may we remember that in the holy act of welcoming others, we welcome you. Dear and holy God, certainly it is difficult to welcome those who are so different from ourselves. If our thinking is on the left, we have a hard time welcoming those on the right. If our beliefs and our thinking are on the right, we have a hard time welcoming those on the left. And sometimes we don't even know what to do with those who are in the center. Help us, dear God, to open our eyes, our hearts, our minds, our souls, our ears, every part of our being, that we can be welcoming to those who are different, allowing ourselves to learn and grow, to be transformed. We'll never come together if we don't learn to talk to one another. So help us, O oh God, to find your voice in our voices that we can be part of the healers of our world. We don't want to turn on the news. We're tired. I wonder if we ever thought how tired you are of watching us do harm to ourselves and our world. Help us, O oh God, to be healers and doers. Help us, O oh God, to not be weary, but to be enlivened to be re-engaged in your mission and your ministry in whatever form it takes during this time. For now, more than ever, we need to be proclaiming your word to the world, your word of love, of justice, of hope. But when we only preach that word to like-minded ears, we may be missing those who really need to hear it. Take us to the little ones. Don't bring them to us. You have sent us out to be disciples. Take us to them, that we can be your hands and your heart in their lives. As we gather here, we pray for the families of Barbara and Kevin and Mary Ann. They have entered life eternal. You have welcomed them with open arms. May our prayers for their families during this time not be idle words, but be action, a phone call, a note, a virtual embrace. We pray for Carrie and Dale, Olivia and Dale, 
Jessica and Catherine. They're each on their own journeys of health and illness. We ask that you bring healing to their bodies and their souls. Be with their families as they take care of them during this time and be with all the healthcare workers out there caring for everyone, the sick, those who have coronavirus, those who have other diseases, those who go to work every single day to care for your people, your creation. We pray for our world. On this day, we especially pray for the Philippines, Egypt, and India. Will there be healing? Will we be part of the healing? We pray that you inspire us, that we might find a way to heal our, our world, whether it's the world we live in right here in our community or it's across the oceans. Help us be your hands and your heart in the healing of creation. On our hearts, we offer up the prayers that are heavy on our minds. And we bring our voices together to pray as the one that Jesus had taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We prayed a prayer of confession, and now we must hear God's words of affirmation. We are born in love, and we live in love. Each day, the spirit of love speaks anew and guides in a love that transcends the world's coldness and fear. You are loved. Your fear is transcended. You are a new person in Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our anthem today, I, I found, um, actually someone sent it to me, and it, just, it was quite beautiful, and so I thought you might enjoy that. So let's listen together to our anthem. We shall, we shall overcome. We shall, we shall.
Our jingle change today goes to Strengthen the Church. This is an offering that helps support different ministries within the United Church of Christ. A portion of it stays right here in our conference and helps our lay academy, our camps, um, youth programs, all kinds of things that we do within the conference. A portion of it goes to the national church and uh, supports things like national youth event and other uh, initiatives that help strengthen, as it says, the local church. Your church continues to work. We are having meetings. We are learning. We are studying. We are reaching out. We are doing mission. And so your church continues to need your support, your faithful and generous support. Let us not give out of duty. Let us give out of generosity. Our God has been so generous with us. Let us return a portion of that generosity to the work, the ministry, and the mission of the church. Please join me as we dedicate these gifts. You welcome us, O God, with abundant grace. Your welcome comes in community and forgiveness, in creation's beauty and love's joy. So may we welcome others through our relationships in our forgiving and accepting forgiveness, in the joy of love's offering and receiving. Amen. A closing hymn is Yesu, Yesu. Brothers and sisters, we gather together that we might hear the word of God. Sometimes that word is troubling. Sometimes that word is comforting. Sometimes that word is challenging. Now as we go out into our lives, we need to live out that word. And even if we can't leave home, and even if we can't physically go out into the world, we can still live that word that God calls us to be and to do. Go in the name of the God who created us, the Christ who redeemed us, and the Spirit who always and forever sustains us. Amen.